Welcome to today's talk. It's from uh, Rustam Mandarov about building data pipelines with Java and open source. And of course, I start with a short introduction. Um, first, a very big thank you for our sponsors, our uh, platinum sponsors, gold sponsors, and uh, a lot of silver sponsors. Without them, this would not be possible to do all these talks and use these uh, streaming technology, etc. Thank you very much. So some of you are already typing in the public chat. The public chat is for you, the attendees. Please use it, talk to each other. It's absolutely fine. If you have a question for the presenter, for Rustam, please switch to the Q&A section on the top right of your window. Usually it's on the top right, depending on your device. And uh, type the question for Rustam there. Then I will ask him. Uh, we have a little delay of about 10 seconds. This is to optimize the stream for your device. So you have the best possible experience and uh, no stuttering, etc. Uh, after the talk, uh, you are forwarded automatically to a special feedback form. Uh, please uh, be uh, uh, fill out this feedback form. It's very important for us. Uh, if you do a good job, if you should change something, um, how you rate Rostam's talk, it's very important for him, I hope. And uh, for everyone who fills out this feedback form, after you have sent the feedback, you have the possibility to enter your email address and once a month, we raffle an IntelliJ license for everybody who uh, have, has given feedback. So this is a, a personal IntelliJ license for the ultimate editions. You can use it commercially if you want, absolutely fine. Uh, after maybe one, two days, let's see how fast it goes. We will make this uh, talk public available on YouTube. And hopefully you are already uh, a member of our YouTube channel. If not, please go to YouTube, uh, click on the register button, and don't forget to click on the little bell so you get notified when we upload a new video. And of course, I uh, should not forget to mention that we have a Slack channel. Uh, please enter the Slack channel. You can uh, get in contact with all the people from the Java user group with Ursula, with me, and all the others. And uh, if you want, of course, you can create channels to uh, discuss something. Feel free to use our Slack channel. Yes, that's it already. A very short introduction, very fast introduction. And now, Rustam, it's yours. And Thank hope you everyone will enjoy this talk. I truly you later. hope so, too. Thank you very much. Um, Thank you all for being here and thank you all for uh, coming to this talk. And um, well, uh, first of all, hello from Norway, from from the the home office, and <laughs> like everybody, pretty much everybody else, I guess, around in within the IT, just like working from home and doing the best, trying to do the best out of it. So um, today I want to talk to you about, uh, well, I have an obvious agenda. So I want to talk to you about this uh, tool that I've been playing around with and share some knowledge about that and give you an introduction of that. Uh, but also I have a little bit more, a uh, bit more hidden agenda in a way because, uh, and that hidden one is that I want you to, uh, to people on who, who watches this talk uh, to encourage you to try to solve problems that you might experience in everyday life in a bit in a creative way. And uh, you can use those problems or way of solving those problems in, um, uh, you can use those things to learn actually new skills or new libraries and things like that. So uh, without much more introduction, I think I'll get to that thing, that part of this problem thing. So. Um, it's kind of always fun to show you the uh, the 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 kind of the 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 uh, the aim of this uh, project that I had. That was a pet project that I had that was playing around in the evening time and everything. So uh, I usually start with uh, I would kind of like to start it with a short kind of uh, a demo first. So um, hey Google, what's the bike availability uh, at the bike uh, stop next to my house? and see if that works. 
There are five bikes available at the moment. Based on historical data, the availability for this station will be decreasing for the next hour. I would suggest getting your bike within next 10 minutes. So I, hopefully that you heard the answer I got. And that was kind of this, um, uh, the, the prediction model and things that uh, is behind this thing that I want to talk to you about. And to get there, I would like to first to explain you this problem that I was trying to solve or the things that was kind of encouraged me to learn uh, this thing and about the data pipelines and Apache Beam and everything. So we need to rewind a little bit. Uh, uh, so if we rewind a little bit, and by a little bit, I mean, um, well, by now it's probably around one and a half, two years or some, uh, something like that, back in time. Uh, the problem was the following. Uh, the problem was that um, uh, we have this bicycle service or like public uh, bicycles uh, that you can uh, rent uh, or you can use uh, inside the city within the city limits. And you basically buy this membership thing and then you can just uh, pick it up where, wherever you want. You can go to somewhere else and just leave them in this locking things. And uh, the ones that you can see on the right side there, the blue ones, uh, they are uh, from Oslo, so where I live. And the ones on um, uh, on the right, I think they are, um, uh, this particular picture is from Belgium, but you have them all around the, uh, all around the world, pretty much. You have them in uh, all around Europe. You have them a lot in, in US. I've seen them in San Francisco. I've seen them. I mean, they're everywhere. Uh, and the, this is this kind of uh, bicycles that I was talking about. And the way they kind of advertise usually this, uh, this kind of service, at least here in Norway, uh, because I actually asked them and I was like, look, I'm doing this talk where I played around with your data. Can I get some pictures, uh, like marketing pictures that I can use some slides, like pretty ones? And I got pictures like this, right? And it's like, it's really, really nice. It's green, it's summer, it's a water next to it. And, you know, you just bike there, you enjoy, it's warm and it's beautiful. And there is another picture like this. Uh, also, like, you know, it's it's very kind of tempting to, to rent the, this bike or to get this bike. And it's not that you kind of rent, you just buy a membership for a year or so, which is really, it's not that much money. And you just basically can use it as much as you want. Um, but the thing is that this is uh, this is still Norway. This is Oslo, right? So uh, this uh, pictures like this, they are true, but they are true for uh, some month, not all year round, because some of the times it might look a little bit more like this. But you know, uh, it's it's fine. You can still bike in the snow. You can still do uh, all these kind of things. And uh, actually, they they had. I think I think they, I'm not sure if they still have, but they had this pilot project where you can rent them even in the winter time uh, as well. But that's not important. So let's go back to this nice uh, uh, weather and a nice kind of scenario. So uh, imagine it's spring. You just got this membership thing. You can get your bicycle. You see pictures like this, and you're just like, ah, oh, this is nice. Um, and then you kind of start biking. So uh, you kind of got all those things ready. Now you need to go somewhere. And you're kind of looking forward and you don't have to think about like having your own bicycle and locks and all the things. You just know you can get one and you know everything is fantastic. And you expect to see uh, those locks, lock uh, thingies where you put the bicycles, something like this, right? And this is a uh, uh, this is actually the 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 real uh, the actual uh, bike stop right next to place where I work. So it's just across the street. So I, I pass I walk past it every day, pretty much. Uh, well, at least when I was going to the office. Uh, but then it, in reality, something quite often what happens is that you you are met with the, the the, the, this locks that looks more like this you see on the left there. So basically it's empty. There are no bicycles. So uh, th this is like uh, the picture of been taken, like I think it's one day in between. They just refill them, people use it and everything. And then you just come back maybe 15 minutes later and it's gone. Everything is gone and people just are biking somewhere. So this is another angle of the same station. So you that kind of sucks, right? This is a bit annoying part. And that was the problem that I was trying to solve because uh, I, I, I paid that money and I was like looking forward to this thing. And I was like kind of planning to bike to that particular location. And I know that, well, it takes 10 minutes to bike there. It's perfect. And then you get out and there are no bicycles and you get a little bit sad. So you get a little bit more kind of this sad puppy there uh, where you're like, oh, you know, now I have to figure out everything. I had everything planned and now I have to do it all over again. So that was the problem. And then what happened was that like, I was like, okay, look, I know 
I work with IT. I know how to create solutions. I know how to solve problems. And I usually am um, paid to solve other people's problems. So why not? I, why don't I try to kind of to solve my own problem? Uh, so then I started to hatching this master plan of like, you know, how I can actually fix the system, at least for myself, uh, and, and, and and solve this in, in, in one way or another. So uh, the first thing started with um, uh, the, 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 the kind of the first thought was like, okay, fine, we don't have a bicycle. Uh, there are no, no bikes available. Well, that sucks. Uh, what can I do about that? Well, I don't really know because, well, I haven't explored the possibilities yet. Uh, can I use an app? Well, no, I cannot because they have an app, but it shows me a real-time data. So and by showing real-time data, uh, it it will show me that, well, the bicycle stop two minutes walk from you has one bike available. And I was like, yay. And by the time I actually walk that two minutes or run to that stop, it might be gone because somebody else was just before me and just picked it up. And that kind of sucks, right? Uh, so can I use a public API? Hmm, maybe, maybe that might be actually a cool thing, uh, depending on API, right? Then I had to look into the API and dig into that thing. But the problem was, again, that this API was exactly the same that the app was using, so they would give me real-time data. They would give me like, okay, this is the now situation on all stops all around the Oslo. Here we go. And uh, then I was like, hmm, okay, I need to do something about that. Now I kind of... I don't get access to obviously to, to their historical data, uh, but then I can create my own. Since it's open data, I can, you know, I can do things with it. So I started uh, collecting that data. So then I was like, hmm, what can I do? Maybe I can collect that. And yes, I can do that. Okay. How do I put that thing into something that I can collect it uh, again, uh, or I can use it later for, 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 for something useful? Well, I mean, I can go all enterprise and go like with a huge data warehouse and everything and all those kind of solutions. And But then it really uh, wasn't very much tempting since it was my pet project. I was doing it like at home and I did not really want to have huge machines and servers and stuff running either at home or somewhere else just to, 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 to fix this little problem. So I all started, actually, I'll probably tell you now, it all started with a tiny little Raspberry Pi on my desk, uh, just collecting that data. But um, so um, I could do another thing after I collected all that. I could, um, I could like, write some kind of custom code that will handle all those APIs and I would dump data from APIs to files uh, and I would do that four times uh, an hour, 24 hours a day. So you can imagine how many uh, files that would be. So then I had to write something uh, custom that would probably parse those things and put them in the regular way I wanted and store it in database and everything. And that kind of really sucked because I actually had to do it every time and if anything changed i had to redo the whole thing and you know it wasn't it really didn't feel right uh being a kind of uh, a developer you know all these problems that might happen right so then i thought okay can i use something and can i have something that is and this is a little bit of a sales pitch right it's like flexible portable and open source yay but it's kind of true as well because you know it's it's uh i i just a friend of mine he was like hey uh have you have you seen this library, this thing uh, that is that can probably help you with this thing, and you don't have to think much about it? And then I, uh, I and then I realized like, hey, look, I can actually learn a new library. I can learn a new skill, uh, and uh, I can learn uh, how it works and everything. But then I can also solve my problem. That was fantastic. So you know, you win-win kind of thing. So now that we have uh, the description of the problem and like how I they started thinking about solving it, I'll probably say a few words about myself. So my name is uh, Rustam. I, as I told you already, I live and work uh, here in Oslo, Norway. Uh, I am uh, working for a consultancy company uh, uh, here uh, as well. I've been doing it for quite some time now. And I um, uh, also am uh, uh, one of the Google developer experts for cloud. Uh, and in addition to that, I'm also a Java champion. Uh, <clears throat> So um, that's 
probably uh, enough about myself for now. Uh, let's go back to the uh, the solution, this kind of thing that I was trying to uh, uh, to 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 uh, implement. So the first thing, like the infancy of that project, really started as I told you in the Raspberry Pi and custom scripts and stuff like that. So we typically have a cron job that would dump all those files from an API, uh, uh, well, get the data and dump them to a file, and then I would need something to store them. Well, typically on a file system obviously uh, and then I would have some kind of something uh, or like Apache Spark or whatever else that would be to uh, to process that data uh, in one way or another and then put it into the data warehouse and uh, visualize it somehow Jupyter notebooks or whatever graphs or you know anything that can show me the, the data I wanted in a way I wanted and then the other thing would be like one day, one beautiful day when they suddenly start supporting streaming or if I, for example, add, uh, say, I don't know, weather API or something that can do streams, I would also have to have another system that would uh, handle that and I would have something that can handle streams and I can put it again into data warehouse and uh, you know visualize it somehow for example if I want to I don't know say I want to uh, correlate uh, this bike information with uh, with weather or you know things like that there is like the imagination the sky's the limit really when you do this kind of things and you play around with when you actually play around being a want to be data scientist kind of thing, right? But then I didn't really want to do that. So I, I kind of wanted to uh, have a solution that can do both. And I don't really have to think about like which one it is. I just create a model and it just works. And that was kind of the one of the motivations why I tried Beam. Because when I do this talk and it's like, I don't, I'm not really connected to Beam in any way. I mean, it's just, uh, the framework that I played around. This is my experience with that. But uh, when I when I do this talk, people ask me why don't you why you use this instead of insert anything any technology X or framework X. Uh, and well, I mean, you could probably use that, and it could probably work for you. But then you know, I ended up I landed on this one, and I had a good experience, so I kind of continued doing that. Uh, so. What is really a beam? And the beam is actually pretty cool. It has this one model to rule them all in a way. I mean, if you can say it that way, because it's um, it has this thing that you write a model and then you can have different runners that can execute that model on different platforms. Uh, so uh, it also supports both batch and streaming modes. So batch mode, that's basically the files I was talking about and streaming, well, that's streams, right? Uh, it can also do a lot of uh, languages. So it supports a lot of languages. So originally that was created by Google and open source at some point. Uh, and that was, uh, if I remember it correctly, that was purely Java. Uh, soon after, they uh, introduced Python uh, SDK for that as well. And uh, quite recently, actually, uh, they did also a Go uh, API for, uh, or SDK for that as well. Uh, so the runners, the runner is actually a pretty cool thing, is that you can actually execute that model that you created uh, in, 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 in different runners. So you can do a local one, so you can run on your own machine, that would be called direct runner. It has some uh, ones for the cloud. So for instance, for, for Google Cloud, that would be Cloud Dataflow, but you know, uh, run this like that. Uh, and then also you can use, uh, you can both get and store data on different file systems like you know Hadoop and all these kind of things. And uh, it can also do all that for you. And it, can, it has like Apache Flink runner, it has a Spark runner, you know, all this kind of thing. So it's kind of cool. And this uh, swapping out the components part, which I uh, sometimes mention, is that you can basically exchange things uh, that feed your model uh, without model noticing it. You can still run things. So if you store your files on S3, uh, that's fine. Uh, uh, and then you just change a little bit in the configuration. And then one sudden, all of a sudden, you can just go over to the buckets in, 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 in GCP or Hadoop or whatever. And then you can also send in the messages in different ways, like, I don't know, like PubSub or Kafka or whatever, or you can do something else. And that is, that is a cool, cool thing, right? So you can just, all those things you just pick and choose and put them together. Um, so uh, what happened was that then I wanted to, well, you know, this is the big picture, the back to this thing. So now I had, 
um, this Apache Beam uh, model in 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 the, in the middle there that could handle both streams and pub, uh, batch files, and then it would just dump it to some kind of database and you know uh, do it everything. So what happened was that my Raspberry Pi was uh, working really nicely for a few months and collecting lots of data. Fortunately, I was smart enough to, to copy that data at some point. And at some point, quite uh, soon after, uh, you know, coincidences has happened sometime in a good way as well, uh, the Pi died. So the SD card, the, 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 the memory card that was on it, in it, it just died. So then I couldn't really continue that. So then I was like, okay, I can just rebuild the whole thing or I can just try to move it to the cloud and see what happens. So the managed version of that would, would have been also uh, pretty much the same. So as a cron job, you would have a some kind of uh, serverless function. So again, this is an example of uh, Google Cloud, but it doesn't have to. It can be anything else. It's just this is the one I was building on and I was using. So, you know, I kind of mentioned that. So uh, some kind of cloud functions with some kind of uh, cron functionality that would wake up and do this kind of dumping every uh, 15 minutes for me. Um, then I store it in some kind of file system storage thing, uh, or uh, or I can do, for example, messaging uh, things like uh, PubSub uh, messaging uh, thing, or kind of MQTT or whatever, any kind of queue messaging things. Um, then I would feed all that into a managed version of Apache Beam, uh, which in this case was a data flow, but it, again, it could be just Apache Beam running on a VM. And then I would dump it to a where data warehouse. Uh, in again, this case, it was BigQuery just because I could. Uh, otherwise, it could have been a Postgres database or anything really you want to store your data. I mean, we'll see. I mean, it's not that in crazy amounts of data, so you you pretty much can use whatever you want. And then I would do like some kind of analysis, right? Visualizations, Jupyter notebooks, and all those kind of fun fun things that you can do with the data. Um, okay, so. Now that uh, I've showed you a little bit of the uh, structure and how things work and how things are put together, um, I want to talk a little bit about the uh, pipelines because that was uh, that was a little bit new concept. I mean, it was a different kind of concept that I had to learn uh, learn uh, when I was kind of learning about Apache Beam. And well, what is a pipeline? Well, pipelines you can see everywhere, right? You can see it as the ones you can see in a picture. That's that uh, that that move uh, water or gas or whatever that might be in the pipes. Uh, or it can be, uh, for example, a conveyor belt in a uh, factory, right? It's, it's basically the concept is you just put something in one and it goes through serious forms of transformations. And at the, at the other end, it comes out as something else. So typically lots of bits and pieces and doors and wheels and everything and motors and things and lights uh, going in one end and there is lots of magic happening and at the other end you have the shiny new car coming out on the other end. So this is a, a typical pipeline. So in 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 and it's in a kind of set of uh, setting off uh, Apache Beam, it's a, it's a way of processing your data. So you do something with your data uh, continuously and it has a direction. So that's an important part here. Uh, so it's a directed and it's also a cyclic graph. So uh, it's a graph, it contains of different nodes and each node is a typically a some kind of transformation of your data. You do something with your data, but it has a direction. So you cannot just go back, rewind in a way, well, what has changed is changed, right? And it does not have uh, cycles. So you cannot just go in a loop and just like go crazy. Um, because, well, again, uh, you, you you change your data and if you go back, it's not going to be the same thing. So, you know, stepping into the river kind of uh, thing, I guess. Um, so uh, how do you write a simple pipeline? So. Um, I want to show you how to do that in a very, very simple way. I mean, there are very more, much more complicated ways of doing that and much more complicated use cases for doing that in Apache Beam, but you know, you have to start somewhere. So, you know, you start with this tiny little uh, pipeline that's uh, very small and cute. And just to give you an idea how you do it in four different steps. Before I show you some code, I want to show you uh, the input data. So that was part of my input data anyway. And uh, it basically was a, a bunch bunch of uh, JSON objects uh, containing an ID for each stop. 
and uh, containing also an information about uh, bikes, how many bikes bicycles are available at that particular stop at that particular time, and how many locks are available. And you need the both, the, both of that information for two reasons, right? One of the reasons is that I want to get a bicycle, and the other reason is that I have a bicycle and I want to park it within this time that was given to me to use that bicycle. Uh, so if there are no locks available, then you're in trouble. Then you need to go to find another stop, right? So this was the data. And at the bottom there that you cannot see uh, on this screenshot, uh, all the way at the bottom, you would have another uh, thing saying a timestamp. So updated on or something like that it was called. So it's a, it's a timestamp there saying what how old is this data. And uh, the API was a bit kind of primitive, so it would be give me all or nothing. So it give me all the stations at the same time or it you know, or you wouldn't get anything. You cannot just say, just give me that particular stop or something. So you just had to dump everything. Uh, and I wanted to convert this kind of structure. I wanted to denormalize it because I wanted to do a little bit of uh, reporting on that and do some kind of, you know, play pretend a pretend data scientist on top of it or, you know, do some stuff with it. Uh, so I wanted to denormalize it and create something like that. That was the first version. So I have IDs, I have availability of bicycles, I have availability of logs. I have some other information about it. So for example, if it has overflow capacity and things like that, basically that means that they will always keep some locks uh, without bicycles when they refill them. So whoever wants to park them at that point, they will still get a, a lock available. So this is what kind of it means. And then you have this updated at per uh, row. So now I could actually do something with this data. And now I can actually look at one uh, one particular stop in within a particular period of time and don't you know qu query all the database, the whole uh, world, just to get that. So the, uh, the pipeline, the pipeline would be very simple. So I would start with reading uh, <clears throat> those input files. So I would find the files, I would uh, put them somewhere. I do a read from file. Uh, then I do uh, some magic, like, you know, uh, sp uh, splitting it by or by lines and things like that. Uh, then I do this uh, specific uh, Pacha Beam magic called a par do. I will explain what it is in a second, but it basically stands for parallel do. It's a step that can be parallelized. Just think of it for now like this. Um, that in this case, this is the thing that parses JSON objects and uh, and creates a data structure I want. So basically, messages data in a way I want it to. And then I would have another stop, uh, another step uh, to store it to a data warehouse of some kind. So in the beginning, it was just basically a very, very, very fancy database of storing things to files. That's all it was, the file system. So dumping it to a file. Uh, but then after a while, I kind of got a bit more kind of advanced and I put it first in the data database. Then I went to this data warehouse and, you know, things uh, started to, to, to move in that direction. Uh, so what do you do? So those four steps that I promised. First thing you do, and well, the, the, the code I'll show you, it's again, it's in Java because this is kind of what I do. This is the Java and cloud things. This is basically what I do every day. I, I, uh, and I, well, I, I wrote the whole thing in Java as well. Uh, so uh, first you define a pipeline options. Uh, you you define things like where your input file is going to be, where your output files are going to be, and uh, you can provide all those options as command line arguments. We'll see that in a second. Uh, but you sometimes want to provide a default options for that. And you can do that with annotations. You want to add maybe sometimes a description for that. You can do that with annotations and things like that. So for example, this is just one option. I had quite a few of them in my uh, in my code but this one for example was uh, about where to find station metadata input files and it has well obviously it has a description and also it has a default string if you're not if i don't provide anything uh, from the command line or any other way it will just go to that default thing and just pick that string and just you know it's very useful for debugging for instance and that's what i used it in in this case anyway that's why it says sample data.txt um, so the second step would be to put that options that you created into a pipeline and create one so just one one liner pipeline pipeline equals pipeline create, and then you just put your options in there. That's it. Uh, the third one is uh, and can be quite long. So this is 
this is uh, where a lot of magic happens or in between those things. So what happens is that you pick your pipeline and then you do dot apply and dot apply does something to your data depending on what you put inside that apply thing. And you can change, uh, ch sorry, you can chain those apply methods uh, one after each other and you just like put them one after each other, one after each other, and then it will just kind of gradually work it, its way through all of those. Uh, so you can see here, I'm reading files. I create this uh, station metadata objects. I put them, uh, I, 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 I put them, I map the elements from the JSON to, to, to this objects. And then I can, I, I, I write this after I've done all these transformations and things I wanted. And uh, some of them are custom transformations that I wrote myself with Java. Uh, and then you, Put that all to a data uh, to 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 output, and you don't really even have to say uh, what kind of output. Or well, you, you say it at the last line, so you say text.io. Then I know it's a file system. But you can also just replace that. We'll see that also in the presentation, where you can just replace that line with uh, another one that would put it into the database, which is kind of cool. So uh, pardus, the the ones that I promised. Um, uh, again. It stands for parallel do, and it is something that can be parallelized on many threads, many machines, many, 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 uh, whatever you, where you run your code without interfering with all the other ones. So in my case, that was uh, uh, this process of uh, uh, converting a, a text JSON structure into a, uh, Java object structure, mapping, redoing all these uh, fields and moving things around the way I wanted, denormalizing this kind of table, and uh, well, making it ready to 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 be processed. So that was in my case. In this case, that was this parallel do thing, and um, um, you know, it's the, the the way I did this thing was quite simple. I created a, 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 a object that will do extract from JSON, and then uh, I will just do this, right? I create this uh, p-transform that takes in a, a p-collection. So p-transform, p-collection, that's all these concepts of Apache Beam where they kind of uh, uh, send data around with uh, p-collections and you do p-transforms too. Uh, I'm not going to go too deep into that. This is the first things you learn if you're going to look into Apache Beam anyway. So uh, I, I want to talk about some other fun things as well. But so um, what you do here is, again, you just do this. You declare this pardu that can be paralyzed on many machines. Uh, and then you 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 parse your JSON, and the 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 you'll see that actually in a second, and that also it applies no matter where you run your model really, as long as your runner supports that. So I run it on a local runner that would support that, and kind of look at my number of cores I have in machine, and you know things like that will just do automatically kind of calculate how much and how how it's going to use all the resources available but you can do it also in a cloud and there they will do uh kind of expand it and especially in the managed version to a crazy amount of machines process your data kind of chew it all through and just kill all the machines and give you the data that's very very handy so the last step the fourth step is to run it and running it is quite simple you've written as i told you it's like write once run uh, everywhere kind of uh, concept, right? Like kind of like what you have with Java as well. But uh, here you just do, uh, uh, you well, in this case, I use a Maven uh, to uh, run it. And then I provide a main class where, well, you know, the, the, the whole magic starts. And then I provide this uh, command line arguments, as I told you. Uh, so you have, in this case, it's just input file and output files. Uh, or out input files, uh, in, which can, by the way, also be globbed. So you, I could have said source slash data dash star dot txt, and then just pick all the ones that start with data dash and things like that. You know, so it's it's quite quite cool thing. And then you provide an output folder where things has to be dumped or stored or you know. Um, but there is this beautiful thing of that I mentioned a little bit or briefly earlier is that you can actually run the same model, and that's where it kind of it was really cool for me. You can run the same model uh, uh, first on your machine where you develop it, debug it, and you know all this kind of things. But then you can just 
add a few extra parameters and run it on the cloud. And it's exactly the same code. All you have to do is just to add a few more options into your Maven uh, command. And in this case, I'll go a little bit, a few times back and forth so you can actually see what's happening. So now we changed a direct runner, the first or well, second line, uh, line where it says P direct runner. We changed it to P data flow runner. And then we add a few more options for like buckets and, you know, temporary location buckets and, you know, all this kind of things. And also, for example, a region where you want your data being processed uh, and stuff like that. So what happened was that now I could actually run my model. I, I could run it first on my machine and I tested it. And I had, uh, by that time, I had uh, quite a few months worth of data, probably, I don't know, I think it was around seven, maybe six, maybe five months of worth of data. I don't remember exactly at that point uh, when I started collecting that. But then... <clears throat> I could actually do that. And this is the visualization of how it looked on, on the cloud uh, where I processed the, the whole thing. And you can see the same pipeline that I showed you earlier, where you read files, you do something with it, you map things, you write it to a database, and you, well, you quit, you're done. Uh, <clears throat> uh, so what happened was that I had uh, I run that, well, by now it's actually two years ago. Uh, and it well, that was my first iteration of the whole thing. and. Uh, I used 18 minutes and 40, so 19 minutes uh, roughly, and I had used uh, seems like 17 or 16 machines to process all that. You can see it on the graph down there. That's a number of machines that it kind of scaled up, processed the whole thing, and uh, dumped everything to a database and, and just killed all the machines for me. And that was cool. And now I actually was sitting around uh, with this kind of database. This is was actually the actual screenshot of the database, how it looked. And, uh, you know, now you kind of start feeling that, hey, you know, I, I, this is getting fun. Uh, by that time, I had very, very little data. So I had in all the process data uh, that was just a little bit more than, well, 36 megabytes. So pretty much nothing, right, in, in, in like a big data uh, size of things. But, you know, still, it was 1.1 million rows of data. So it was 1.1 million entries of data. So, you know, it was a little bit of data. It was something. And then I was uh, getting kind of brave and a bit crazy. And then I thought, well, you know what? I want to do some more stuff with it. I want to see how far I can push this uh, beam thing and I can what you can do with this thing. So now I wanted to add some metadata about the station. So now I had this uh, availability, but availability would give me um, IDs of stations, but I had absolutely no idea where that station was or which station actually even it was. Uh, and that was uh, written in another uh, API uh, endpoint uh, where I would have all the metadata about the station. So uh, what the title of this station, what the name of that thing is, where it geographically it would be, like latitude and, latitude and longitude, uh, all these kind of things, you know, and description and, you know, all the, all the fun part. And I would even have uh, uh, small uh, polygons around where and the shape of that locking station, as you can see there in bounds, it would kind of give me a, a, a polygon bound uh, boundary of that station. And you know, it's kind of fun. All the fun things you can do, all the data you can collect and put together. So now I wanted to have a even more denormalized version of that data. So I wanted to have all this data that I had to begin with, but I would also want to add uh, information about that stop. And I wanted to add it for each stop because I didn't want to do uh, joins, like database joins, uh, to make it easier to do some kind of reporting and stuff on top of that. But also was the reason, one of the reasons was that uh, sometimes stations would change names, they would move, they would uh, be uh, 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 closed or open new ones and things like that. And I wanted to keep the historical name and historical like location of that. So. I put that thing. And uh, by that time when I was doing this, that was already uh, sometime, it was almost a year later. So it was in 2019, uh, so a year ago now. Uh, and by that time I had a, around 600 unprocessed files that I would want it to process now. And now I want to, to do the job twice, right? So I would, for every, uh, every time I would dump data about a station or all stations, I would also dump the metadata about all stations. So now I would have actually two files, four times an hour, 24 hours a day. 
Uh, so yeah, 600 megs of files. And then I would actually do this. So it, it was actually a pretty cool thing. You can actually do, you start with two pipelines and at some point you do a join, um, kind of very similar to what you do in a database. You do it, uh, in this case, I used ID as a joining key. Uh, so I would do join, and then I would process it and do things with it and dump it to the database. So that was my second uh, attempt of, of like you know advancing my pipeline a little bit. Uh, and this one uh, was uh, actually quite a bit bigger. Uh, so 600 megs of files, uh, and it was much more. I think it was almost uh, uh, 10 months worth of data. I think it was data for all of the. 2019 until that date. And now I was actually able to run this thing in 14 minutes as opposed to 18 minutes before. But the, the reason for that was that I had, uh, let's see, 100 and uh, I cannot really even see on this picture how big that thing was. I think it was something like 160-ish machines. Um, yeah, I think it was 160 something machines uh, that spun up uh, and um, and 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 um, processed all that data, did all these joins and everything from two different pipelines, put them all together, and blah blah blah, and just you know died. So now I had um, and while I'm talking, because we have a tiny little delay, I want you to think uh, you know 160 machines running for 14 minutes and things like that. Um, think of a number which you think that might cost. Uh, because we have a little bit of delay. We have, I think we have around 10 seconds of delay. Um, so while I'm talking, you have some time to think, and then you can type uh, what you think uh, it might cost in the chat. Just use the chat uh, for now. I guess that's uh, that's not really Q&A thing. So just, just use it there. I'll, I'll, I'll see what, what you write there. So uh, now we had a little bit more of data. Now I had the, my table was actually much bigger. It was one whole one gig as opposed to, 36 megs that I had originally. And now I had uh, 13 million rows of data. So now we're getting somewhere. We're getting like, ah, uh, you're not that far away, Marcus. That's that's actually, that was a really, really good guess. Um, <clears throat> so, um, um, yeah, so the thing was that I had 13 million rows of data. So now we're actually getting somewhere. Now we're getting, uh, now we're almost having one and a half year worth of data, which was, um, which you can do reporting and you can do predictions. You can see trends. You can, you know, play around with things. And suddenly you're not a kind of architect Java developer anymore. Now you're, now you can actually play a little bit of a data scientist in, in, in a way. And that was kind of fun. So, you know, back to the money question. So what happened, the reason I asked you to do that uh, was um, that when I run this processing job, I got this. And I got a little bit scared because I did that in, in like uh, back, at, at, at that time, at that time, it says, "Hey, you know what? You've used nine hundred percent more, which you, or, or compared to what you've used before." And I was like, "Uh oh, this is going to be expensive because you know this is going to be bad." Um, I didn't think about that, but then I just run the job without thinking much about it. Um, and you know, nine hundred percent—that sounds a lot. So I was like, I was a little bit nervous. And then I, because you can can't see the, the 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 billing thing until the day after. So I was like, you know, I was a little bit kind of biting my nails, and you know, a little bit nervous for for a night. And in the morning, I woke up and I checked, and it was actually quite fun. It was three point five four euros uh, worth of nine hundred percent more kind of thing, and my billing kind of looked like this. So it was pretty much nothing, just a few cents for the files and things I store, and then it went like skyrocketing to three point four euros and went back. So that was actually a cool thing, you know. And then instead of being the sad puppy that I showed you earlier, you were a bit more into this kind of amazed monkey kind of a face, you know, you were like, oh, wow, that was really cool because it just worked. It worked in my machine. And then I could just move it to a cloud and just worked in the cloud almost pain, painless. And it didn't really cost me much. Yes. And I processed 600 megs worth of data. So around 10, uh, 9, 10, 11 months worth of data, uh, 24 hours a day, four times an, an hour, two files, uh, each time and you know all those kind of things I process the whole thing in 14 minutes I could have uh, if I would have done it on my machine that would have probably taken much 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 longer time even with eight cores and things like that so um 
back to the, the 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 big picture thing so now what we we actually so far we implemented this part right we implemented the batch processing uh, you do the model thing and you put it into some kind of uh, data warehouses and you can do reporting. You can show the data and things like that, which is cool. Uh, but then I wanted to also explore this other thing, another powerful part of uh, uh, um, Apache Beam. And I would like to talk a little bit about that as well. So how do you go from uh, batch processing? So basically you have files per day, per hour, whatever that would be, to a stream. And stream is, well, it's a stream, right? It just goes and on and on and on and on and uh, you don't really know uh what delays do you have here so the thing is that your data that is bound to or is about uh, eight o'clock in the morning uh, can arrive at around eight o'clock in the morning that's fine that's happy day scenario uh, but then it can also arrive a bit later it can arrive at well 8 30 but you know things can happen and it will be also sometimes arriving at bit past two in the afternoon and that kind of sucks so now you have to do some other things you have to do some extra things with your model but the cool thing is that that uh apache beam also supports that it can actually give you this um uh, possibilities to handle things like that and the one of these things that it does or one of the kind of the important things it does it will help obviously helps you with transformations which is cool but they also provide this windowing uh function uh, functionality where you can have a sliding window just going through um uh, your data and you can process it in one way or another but you can also add things like watermarks you can also add triggers saying like hey if you see this kind of data do this and you know things like that and you can also do accumulations for you so uh, transformations first. Uh, transformation is a pretty cool thing. You can, well, you can do either element-wise transformation. You just pick one thing, uh, you do something with it, and you leave that thing to be another thing, but just one thing. Uh, you can do aggregation. You pick, put, pick two things, you do something with them, it becomes one thing, and you put them in, 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 in uh, you know, uh, into the pipeline back. And then you can do a composite. So you can do all of these things, all of the above kind of things, right? Uh, and then, you know, windowing part that is, uh, well, this is basically you create windows. You just define your window based on time or some other things. And you can also, uh, you know, you, you, you process data in that way. Uh, but then you can also do this kind of grouping uh, part where you basically sort things afterwards. You kind of keep your input and you sort them and put them in the right buckets the way you want. Sometimes you don't want to uh, uh, do a, a windowing depending on um, uh, time, but you want, might want to do some other kind of ways of doing that. So for example, I don't know, an example here probably would be a typical game uh, scenario where you create games and stuff. You would be more interested in a session rather than uh, a time you would want to have all these things that happen with once within one session instead of when that happened that is not really important and stuff like that so you can do these kind of things as well uh if you other cool features i mean there's a lot of those cool features but just a few ones that i uh, would like to mention here uh is uh, one of them is that how simple is is doing this windowing thing you can do apply and then you do a sliding window of five minutes for one minute so you basically do uh, look at last five minutes of data every minute. So every one minute you pick up a window of five uh, minutes worth of data and you look at it, do something with it or, you know, whatever. That's really cool. Another cool thing that took me a little while and a little bit of digging around uh, is the visualization of the pipelines. Because as you've seen, uh, the visualizations I've used earlier from the cloud provider, that is not part of the open source. This is something they develop on top of uh, for their solution, for their managed solution. And that was really bugging me because I really wanted to have a little bit prettier visualization because otherwise you just have a piece of code and you don't really sometimes see uh, the kind of logical errors you do in your pipeline and you don't see it until you go all the way to the cloud and then you're like, ah, yeah, yeah, that was wrong. Let me fix that. And then you do the same and again and again. So you're a little bit in the dark. So uh, I, I figured out, I, I a little bit of digging around, I figured out actually it's extremely simple way of uh, uh, doing this kind of things. Um, uh, and um, uh, what, uh, the, what you do basically is just you 
create your pipeline and then you use the pipeline of object uh, to dump it to a dot string. And when you have a dot string, you pretty much can do whatever you want with it. So what I did up there is just basically visualize it in the raw uh, and it doesn't really look pretty, but it still does the job. But you can always always do something because dot format, it's kind of a bit more known format and you can do things with it. So I did write a blog post because it wasn't really documented that well. So I ended up writing a, a short blog post about this thing and I put it there, uh, uh, the link there at the bottom. So. Um, please have a look at that if you if you want to see the visualization of this thing. And the other thing was that a uh, cool thing is that you can replace parts of your uh, of your pipeline where you can just throw away something and replace it with something else. So I was saving things to file in the beginning, but I wanted to put into database, so I just replaced that. So in a, in in a way of code or well simplified code, uh, that would be something like first I had something like this: read lines, do something with it. Uh, format uh, things the way I wanted and then write to files. Uh, but then I wanted to replace that uh, with a way of uh, writing that to a database. So I picked up the database, I found the way uh, you talk to that specific database. So in this case, it was BigQuery. Uh, and then I uh, created that and replaced those two lines with two another lines. Uh, but then it's a little bit of a lie because you also had to do some speci specific things for a database, uh, in this case, again, this uh, BigQuery, because I had to define the schema and things like that. But this is, uh, this is, um, um, uh, this is kind of things you have to do. If you work with the database, you need to define schema and tell how your data is going to be and things like that. Uh, another cool thing, you could also dump it to another database, uh, which is also another open source uh, database called DurangoDB that a colleague of mine uh, helped me with because he saw me playing with this thing around and he was like, hey, you know what? Give me this stream of data and I can do some cool thing with it. And after like a few minutes uh, of him having this pipeline of mine, he could dump it into the database, another database, and then uh, with like a few clicks, it, you had this map of, uh, because well, since we had geographical positions of everything, we could actually put the uh, put all the stops on a map and show the average availability and things like that, you know, all the fun uh, rough data about it just in, in a box there. So it was cool. Uh, and then you can do all this reporting and statistics and everything. So we ended up writing uh, quite crazy queries uh, at some point. Uh, so this was a um, uh, one of the stops. Uh, it seems like just out of the name. Now I don't remember where it was, but out of the name, it seems like it was just by the Austin University uh, a stop there, where you would just uh, look at uh, let's see, average availability locks uh, broken by uh, month, day of week, and hour. Uh, or then you could do some other things. For example, we were looking at the places where there were mostly broken bicycles always or mostly empty or mostly, you know, you can do all these kind of things or you can do all even trends. You know that availability is going to be increasing or de decreasing at some point. So all those kind of things. And all this was kind of very simple uh, with this Apache Beam thing. So, you know, a little bit back to this uh, amazed monkey kind of thing. So no more sad puppies, even though that puppy was really, really cute. But I mean, that, that monkey is cool as well. So um, <clears throat> there are a few warnings that I want to mention at the end is that um, one of the things that you're still working with data, you're working with um, live data and your APIs are live. Uh, APIs might change. I mean, in the worst case, they can just stop working. They just can just stop spewing that data. But I mean, that's an extreme case. And But in, in reality, what can happen is that uh, it can uh, change the format, it can change the way, it can add some things or remove some uh, particular um, things that you expect to be there, and it might break your pipeline. It, it will happen. It did happen to me. At some point, they changed the, the uh, API, and all of a sudden, uh, machine to machine API would uh, return prettified JSON, which was really, I don't really understand why they did that, but they did that. And it broke my whole pipeline just because of the uh, uh, line breaks, because uh, my uh, pipeline would expect everything to be on one line because of this parallelizing. Uh, because, well, J uh, the way Beam works, it reads line by line, and you cannot just say it, read the whole thing, and then parse it. So it would just re read one line after each other and try to do something specific to one line. When you pretty print 
JSON, it will be illegal JSON if you look at one line at a time, right? So just things like that will happen. And it's basically an ETL job in a way, uh, if you think of like a data warehouse. So it will break and it will, you will need to do that. But at the same time, you don't still don't have to maintain your custom scripts. It's still one model. You just have to tweak it a little bit. Um, yeah. So, and people don't do API management very often. And this is a very sad thing, but this is a very true thing as well. So, you know, it will happen. It's not if, it's probably a question of when more. Uh, and then, you know, you had this picture. You could actually now do batches. You can do uh, streaming processing and you can do all this. And that was my journey of learning a new skill, a new framework that I haven't used before and uh, trying to solve a fun problem and playing around with things that I haven't done before. So that was my uh, bit of my motivation behind it. And I put everything on a, uh, on, on, on a, in a GitHub repository. Uh, so everything is uh, available there on, on GitHub. So you can have a look and play around and you can start the pipeline. It should run. Uh, uh, if not, give me, give me, give me a, a shout out or whatever, or message, send me a message or anything like that. I'll, uh, we can have a look at that. So, but then it has some sample data. It has a pipeline. And the point is to show you how things are done. It's not... I don't expect you to use it like for this thing, right? This is just a kind of cool excuse to use it uh, for fun things. Um, <clears throat> and that is pretty much it, I think. Uh, I have uh, uh, one last slide, slide to say thank you and to give you some more uh, of the uh, information uh, about like where you can find me. So this is my Twitter handle there, R Memandarov. Uh, and uh, well, you can find me also on uh, a bit bit older social media platform called email. Uh, so that's that's me there. Uh, and also, uh, well, my, my, my blog as well, where I try to blog from time to time, kind of semi-regularly. So I guess that is, um, uh, that is it. And I will, I will uh, keep the presentation here uh, so you can find my contact information, but I'll kind of switch to answering the uh, questions. Oh, perfect. Okay. Thank you, uh, Marco, for posting the URL. I was just about to do that. Um, there was somebody asking for the GitHub URL in, in a more clickable format. Uh, so, yeah, uh, let's see. I'll switch to Q&A if there are any questions. Well, there are still. Um, I can't see that much. Uh, no. any, any questions? Yes, so until they enter some questions, mm -hmm. um, I would like to ask you, uh, can we have your slides and send them to our uh, to the piece of yeah. today's talk? So then they have all the links you have there in. And I'll do that. I will, yeah. I'll send you a PDF works fine. Yes, please. perfectly. Perfect. That uh, would be great. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. I mean, it's, it's, it's <laughs> again, it's, this is, uh, this is not what I do every day, and this is not what I'm getting paid to do anyway. And it's it's, yeah. it's but it's still fun, very fun thing. And I actually had a use for that later, or of that knowledge later in when I was developing something else for 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 work and for doing things. But it was you know it was um, it was I hope it was a little bit of an encouragement for you, uh, everybody else, to play around with things you haven't played around before and try to find the fun way of solving problems that you might have or might not have or might not be aware that you have, but you still have, and it's, you know, it's mm -hmm. fun. There is one question for you. Ah, it's okay. from Oliver. He's asking, have you been able to visualize some of your data and make some predictions? Uh, yes, and, well, yes and no. I mean, I, I it's still, I'm still playing around with this thing, but I did, uh, I was, uh, for now it was, um, I did visualize that. I, I, I don't have the, uh, I, I put, where was that? So what I did was, uh, let me think. I just need to re remember what I did. So what I did first in the infancy of this project, I was doing uh, things where I would dump data to a database and then I would use like things like, I don't know, sheets or Excel or whatever to, to, ex to extract that data or copy, even, even sometimes copy paste it just to test it and create graphs and things. But that was kind of very manual and a bit more testing out kind of way of doing that. Later, when we put everything into a, uh, 
uh, or when you put all that into a database, uh, it was then we would do a lot of more heavy query queries where we just group by things by dates and by hours and by so then we would actually see quite I don't have I unfortunately I did not take any screenshots uh, I'll I'll put that uh, for the next time I do this talk Thank you for for, for reminding me of that uh, I, I I I did put like uh, things. Um, uh, when, you, when you can see, like, for example, availability uh, increasing or decreasing throughout the day, uh, also depending on where the stops are and also where you would find, as I told you, where you would find a broken bicycles or you would find a broken broken locks or, you know, things like that. So there was a funny thing. We realized that it was the stop that uh, has <clears throat> a huge amount of broken bicycles and we didn't really understand why. And then we realized, we looked at the map and checked where it is, and it was just across the street from their uh, shop, so their repair shop. So what, what, what we expect or we thought probably happens is that uh, those cars that move the bicycles around, they come and dump them in that locker uh, and mark them as broken, and then the people that are working in that workshop, they kind of get them from there, repair them and put them back and do this kind of thing. So then we were like, huh, that makes sense. And so it was kind of fun things that we would play around with data. There is another question for Marco. He mm -hmm. marked it as off topic, but it's very interesting. Yeah. He wants to know, how did you become a Java champion? Ha, huh. that's that's a, actually, that's a really cool question. That's a, um, a fellow, uh, I'll, I'll find the link. Uh, a fellow Java champion, he did actually write a pretty good, um, uh, post about that, and I usually how to become a uh, become a Java champion. Um, he actually wrote a pretty good uh, uh, blog post about that. Um, the Vlad. So can I? No, it's asking questions. So where? How do? You, how do I answer? Can I answer it? I'll probably answer it in the chat. Is that okay? Yes, absolutely. Okay, so uh, how to become a Java champion? Oh, um, Michael has sent a link here. Yeah, yes, he yeah. did. Oh, perfect. That yeah. was exactly the same uh, link. That yeah, very, on. very good uh, viewers today. Very fast. <laughs> that was really, really quick. So uh, basically, it's uh, it's um, well, yeah, it says pretty much uh, all there, and it's uh, it's. Uh, uh, it's a very cool thing, and it's more of a uh, acknowledgement of the things that you do, like things you do for the community, things you do in a form of, uh, you know, running things and organizing things in the community, but it also can be things that you do to promote uh, the language and the platform, and, you know, it's it's different. And they, if, you, if you Google it, you'll see those four categories that they kind of usually uh, would like to 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 be to be present in a typical candidates uh, <clears throat> to 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 be considered for that and it's the way it works is basically you're being nominated by some other Java champion uh, and uh, then others vote and uh, if everybody's happy and everybody kind of votes a thumbs up then you're through and you're part of that and it's it is supported by Oracle but in not in any other way is connected or uh, like uh, as as uh, to 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 the company in other ways, so it's it's an independent group in a way, right? So it's uh, it's pretty cool. It's a really really nice and cool uh, um, title to get, uh, and I was really really um, happy to 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 get that. Thank you very much for sharing this information, and of course, thank you very much for your very interesting talk. I learned a lot, and I will do some. Uh, some tests on my next Open Friday at work, of course. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> that's that's exactly what I wanted yeah. to hear. That's like music to my ears. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I got interested in this topic. That's that very nice. really, really cool. Yeah. Okay, so, of course, we have some more events, not today, but the next uh, few days of this month. So please check out our website and... Uh, yeah, I think there is a, very, a, a lot of interesting talks coming soon. And, uh, well, we want you. So if you have ideas for which topics you want to hear or see at the Java User Group, or if you are a presenter and want to do a presentation at our Java User Group, please come to us and uh, tell us, and we are uh, 
would like to organize something with you. And of course, like uh, Rustam here, uh, every presenter as a Java user group will get a present from us. It's uh, this nice special oh Swiss knife with Java user group branding. This of course, not amazing. this one because this is mine. Uh, you will get a new one. <laughs> wow, so, this is really, really cool. Yeah, yeah, it's it's really huge. Has a lot of tools for repairing notebooks and computers and all this stuff. A uh, really nice thing. <clears throat> so if you want one, do a talk for the Java user group Switzerland. Fantastic. Yeah, that's really really cool. Uh, one fun fact, actually, when you mentioned uh, like the, when you were talking about Switzerland and everything, the fun fact: <clears throat> me and Switzerland have the birthday at the same uh, day. Oh. Yes, uh, I, I have a colleague, he's Swiss, so I always congratulate him with his birthday, and he yes. congratul congratulates me with my birthday, so we always do that. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's fantastic. So, so I can now remember your birthday forever. So. That's exactly what he said, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so thank you very much, everybody. Um, I will now end the session, and as usual, um, a few seconds, please be patient. There are a lot of people here. Uh, after the, I end the session, you will be forwarded to the feedback form. Please fill out the feedback form, take some time, and uh, maybe you are lucky and will win an IntelliJ Idea license for one year. And thank you very much for being here, Rustam. Thank you very much for thank being here, much. all the attendees, and hope to see you all soon. Have a nice evening. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you for having me, and thank you for coming all. Bye-bye.